Hey, how's it going everybody? I'm Tutmo. In this video, I really wanna talk more about what I've done in the last six months and specifically 3D. Since uploading my last progress video, I've uploaded six complete games that are all downloadable and free to play on itch. If you wanna go ahead and check them out, I'll put links in the description below. For you awesome folks who have actually watched some of my other videos, you might know that the very first 3D game I ever made was called Donkey Defender. By far, that was the game I struggled the most to complete. The differences between 2D and 3D became much more clear as I worked my way through all these issues that I thought I understood already, having worked through them in the 2D spectrum. Maybe I'm just naive in going into this stuff, but I didn't expect it to be quite as difficult to comprehend stuff like physics. Unity has a pretty great physics system already built into it, but making it actually feel snappy and not floaty is weird. You can't just use like the standard equations for gravity to really make it feel good, especially when you're adding non-real stuff like multi-jumping. Along with the movement kind of comes how do you animate that stuff. 3D animation was, uh, was pretty tough. Yeah, to this day, I won't say I'm a great 3D animator, but I have definitely learned a lot. Putting all the pieces together to basically put a skeleton or rig inside a 3D model was much more difficult than I originally expected. A lot of that actually fell on my wife, who does all of our 3D modeling. But at the time, she was really learning a lot too. She had never rigged anything up until that point. So needless to say, it was a learning experience for both of us. But for me, once it was in Unity, just applying even an animation that I downloaded online was not straightforward. I thought, yeah, once I have this thing kind of working and it's animated and the bones move correctly, I could just slap on an animation and boom, good to go. No, nope. my character just bunched up in a ball and I had to like kind of unmorph him and tweak all the frames to get him to actually move somewhat normal. Even now his little head goes like this when he moves and I really don't understand why. Another big thing that is still something to this day I'm working on is good lighting. Uh, you think you just throw a light in the top that shows you where the sun is and everything else kind of takes care of itself. But what you don't ever really think about, at least I didn't, the whole idea of bouncing light isn't just there for you. The more times you bounce the light, the harder it is for a computer to render. You need to balance out what looks good versus what looks real. For me, my, my current solution is super inaccurate. I basically add as many suns as it takes or many lights in the sky to make all the angles look good. In 2D, that was just never really a problem. I will say one thing that was actually pretty similar was the AI pathfinding or AI movement. I picked more of a nav mesh approach that almost seemed to be easier. Like, I don't know if it's because I've already gone through the whole AI pathfinding thing before or not, but in 3D for me, it was pretty straightforward. Aside from this being my very first 3D game, this was actually the first game ever that I released. What this meant though, it was my first time uploading to Itch. To me, I figured, you know, once a file is built in Unity, uh, you just upload that file into Itch. I uploaded the Windows version, but I dropped off a bunch of the files that actually make it work. Once I finally did get a file that was playable. It was really, really, really cool watching someone actually have fun with the game that I made and then obviously seeing a lot of feedback of ways to make it better. I did add some of the features that were recommended and I'd love to spend more time into building out that game, but I was still trying to learn different things about 3D, so I moved on to another game called Jumping Beans. My primary goal for Jumping Beans, honestly, was just to get a project set up faster. I learned every time I create a new project as a new dev, it just took me so long to gain my footing. So with this new game, I wanted to keep the idea very simple. I wanted it to be something where I could implement all the features and everything over the course of about a week. But more importantly, I wanted to make a very playable game from day one. The mechanics in the game aren't overly complex. It's essentially a platformer where you jump across each level, but you have a team of three. Each time you get through the level, you have less platforms to use. Aside from being able to make the game relatively quickly, I was able to release the build much more smoothly than my first time around. That was cool. I'm gonna skip right on over to the next game I made, which was basically yet another Minecraft clone. Now I've seen some awesome YouTube devs out there like Sam Hogan and Steven who made way better Minecraft clones than me in much shorter amount of time, but I still wanted to go through the experience of building it in Unity myself. The whole concept of building worlds procedurally has been something I've been interested in since I even got into game dev on day one. I learned very quickly that just spawning a bunch of cubes is not the way to do it. I didn't understand the idea of what a voxel was. I won't go too deep into it here, but basically it creates a flat mesh, which is just insane to me because 
when you're digging through like a world like Minecraft, you instantly think if you've never developed a game like that before, it's just billions of cubes everywhere. Once you pick actually your way through one of those cubes, uh, really you're just changing the mesh. Overall, it was a pretty cool process and I learned a lot about creating 3D procedural worlds. For the fourth game I made, I actually wanted to take a 2D game that I'd played as a kid that was relatively simple and turn it into a 3D experience. So the game I chose was Minesweeper. Instead of just sitting back and clicking on little tiles, I threw the person headfirst into the game world where they were now encountered with a field of mines in a first person view. The player would just smash each of the tiles and basically flatten them out. It acts very much like the classic Minesweeper game with the few things I sort of messed up, but overall I think it turned out pretty cool. Once you hit a mine in Minesweeper, it's not a big deal, but if you do in this, this third person in your face experience, uh, it's, it makes you jump a bit. <laughs> of course, my wife did all the modeling again, which I think she did a fantastic job with. She's able to learn a lot and grow with me as I focus more so on the code and technical aspects, which was a really, really cool experience. So the fifth game I made isn't necessarily one I would add to a list of my dream games, but it was my very first game jam ever. The theme of the jam was less is more. So we created a food delivery game, kind of like an Uber Eats driver, where you would go from restaurant, pick up an order and deliver it to the house. Our whole idea was the less time you take delivering each order, the more money you would make. My wife did all the awesome 3D modeling. I think it kind of improved even from the last game, which it's really fun to watch her just kind of grow. I really shouldn't put it that way. <laughs> Overall though, I thought it was a pretty great experience. So much so that I decided to enter into the Brackey's 2021.1 game jam. Except this time to mix things up a little bit for me and I could learn something new, I decided to collaborate with a awesome game dev that I met here on YouTube. I was always kind of scared to work with another dev just because all my experience has really just been YouTube tutorials. I don't have a formal education in computer science or anything like that, so it was always kind of intimidating for me to even consider working with another person who developed. But in the end, it actually turned out to be great. I think my year and a half experience leading up to that made it possible. If I were to have done something like that in my second month of doing game dev, it probably wouldn't have been as great of an experience. Fortunately, there are only a few differences between how he codes as a professional and how I code as a, uh, yeah. We landed on something called Knights of Quirt, where you basically use the Quirt keys on your keyboard to attack little enemies as they're coming down each knight's lane. I had a really good time. Now that I've got about six 3D games under my belt, I was pretty excited about revisiting my dream game that I started off in 2D. The game currently is called Revna. It has a lot of the elements that I've been working on with the past six games, but honestly, I'm not 100% sure what the future holds for it, other than I'm more prepared than I was six months ago. My hope is to start adding some devlogs of my dream game while still sprinkling in some of the smaller stuff too. Going back to those and breaking up the monotony of working on one game that has no end in sight is a really good way to approach game development for me personally. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like and subscribe to be the first to see my next update. Until then, you take care of yourself.